This week's guest, our father and son team, Dr. Mahmoud Ghanoum and Afif Ghanoum. Welcome to Broken Brain Podcast. Thanks for having us. A little background on my guests that are here. Dr. G is a tenured professor and director of the Center for Medical Mycology at Case Western University and University Hospital's Cleveland Medical Center in Cleveland, Ohio. He spent his entire career studying medically important fungi and publishing extensively about their virtuous factors, especially in microbial biofilms. Dr. G is the scientist that named and coined the term the mycobiome, the fungal community in the body. Over his career, Dr. G has published over 450 peer-reviewed papers, and his work has been cited in over 21,000 pieces of literature. He has been actively funded by the NIH continuously since 1991 for his work studying the fungal and bacterial communities in our bodies, with a total of over 25 million in NIH funding to date. Dr. G was dubbed the scientist who is now known as the leading microbiome researcher in the world by the Washington Post and is also the founder of the leading antifungal clinical testing company in the world, Next Trillion Sciences. He has been involved in the development of 95% of antifungals that have come to the market since the 19. 19- 90s. Impressive bio. <laughs> Thank you very much. I... What are biofilms and what role do they play when it comes to the microbiome? Let me first tell you what is a biofilm. And I'm sure Afif maybe can say a little bit more where people can understand it better than I described. I think everybody's understanding <laughs> you great right now. <laughs> so what happens, organisms, when they want to infect, the first thing they do is they stick to your tissue or they stick to your gut gut lining, okay? And then they start to produce this slimy material to protect themselves, as if you have jello, and inside the jello you have all these M&Ms or raisins. So the raisins are the fungi or the bacteria for that matter, and the jello which is covering them is what we call the matrix. Now, why this is important? Because once they do this, they become in a, a protected environment. Antibiotics cannot get rid of them, antifungal cannot get rid of them, and even our immune system cannot reach them. So our studies showed that in Crohn's disease patients, we found that bacteria and fungi, they come together and they start to form these biofilms, and we call them digestive plaque. Okay? Right. The nice, uh, also interesting thing is other people now are starting to see these biofilms, not just in Crohn's uh, patients, but in people with colorectal cancer or even diabetic wounds. So having a biofilm which made of pathogenic organism or bad microbes is not good news. Right, so you have a bad fungi or bacteria, and we'll talk about how they develop these biofilms and how they get stronger, but essentially they have a force field around them. Yes. And they have a natural one. So naturally, it's a defense mechanism. It's a protection mechanism. But there's something happening today that's creating almost super fungi and super bugs. So what's happening today that's causing them to have these unpenetrable shields from even our own immune system? What's causing, like we know that we've heard the term of like antibiotic resistant bacteria, and that can often come from like hospital environments that are ultra, ultra, ultra clean. Yes. And using a lot of antibiotics, and then you get a, you can develop a superbug that's happening in the hospitals, that can cause like C. difficile or other challenges. Is that the similar thing that's happening with our fungi? With fungi, what what happens is because we are using so many uh, indwelling catheters, for example, so many plastics in our body. These fungi, they come and stick to the plastic and they start, which, which we say they adhere. And then once they adhere, they start to produce this and they become a big problem where it is responsible for up to 25% mortality rate in hospitals. So it is, is having a biofilm infection is not a good news. And really there is a great efforts 
uh, we in, uh, uh, as you know, my team in, uh, was involved in this and was funded by NIH to try to see how can we first understand how these biofilms form and then can we find things that can get rid of them. Understood. What are, what are other things? Are there other things that cause these biofilms to form? Yeah, and, and just as like some context too, people will oftentimes want to say, oh, I've never heard of biofilm. We say, you actually have like dental plaque, that's a biofilm. Right. right, and so when you're trying to get rid of that plaque on your teeth, it's not the biofilm plaque that's the issue. It's as you said, it's this force field per protecting these pathogenic organisms against your gums. Right. So what we're seeing is that that sort of um, the force matrix, field. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that matrix, matrix is really becoming more prominent all over the body, and a lot of it's to do with even in in the uh, agricultural system. There's a lot of pesticides, a lot of antifungals that are getting passed into the food system, which is so could have an effect. could too much over usage of antifungals create a stronger biofilm on a fungi? It may it may create an organism which is more resistant right. to uh, uh, antifungal, but then also it may re rev their virulence factor. Like for example, if you uh, if you have candida, let's say the simplest example, you have candida, it's in the gut, we kill the bacteria, we give it a chance to, st to start to grow and where it stick to our gut lining, you know, ep the epithelial layer there. Once it sticks there, it starts to change its form, its form. Like instead of becoming like baker's yeast, you know, like round, it becomes like threads, it becomes filament and these filaments they start to invade our gut lining and cause damage yeah you will literally see on the electron microscopy these filaments which are basically like them latching in to the gut lining like that's one of the things when you talk about leaky gut that's exactly what's happening you will actually see in this 5000x electron microscopy yeah. organisms going through the gut lining and really it does not have, I gave you the example at the beginning of biofilms, they stick to catheters, but also they stick to our tissues, like for example, the gut lining. Or in st certain extreme cases where candida go through the gut and start invading the kidney, for example, we look at, if you look at the kidney, you find all these white batches on it, which are biofilms there, forming in the tissue. So it does not have to be an inanimate object it really can grow also in our tissue and start causing problems. So what's the repercussions of all these biofilms and their increasing amount in our bodies worldwide? What's the repercussions of it in our own body and our own health? I mean, repercussion is if you don't control them, they will start, as I said, maybe breaking down our gut lining and start causing systemic infection. That's why it's very important to control them. Now there is something which I want to say also, but there are some good biofilms. Not all of them are bad. Right, there's it's some the, that are in our mouth that are also good. Yes. And the, like that, there's some in our, in our gut. gut that are also yes, good. Yes, because these are may, uh, formed by the beneficial microbes. And this is good because in a way, these biofilms try to protect our lining, uh, gut lining. So in cases, if these pathogenic organisms, the bad ones that they come together, then we have a problem and we need to get rid of them. The other thing they'll do is biofilms will actually inhibit nutrient absorption because they're literally lining the gut. And it, they do two things. One, they act as a physical barrier to nutrients going through the GI lining, but also these organisms actually scavenge nutrients. So it's kind of like a double edged sword when it comes to nutrient like absorption. Like a parasite that's stealing your uh, Yeah, it literally. Yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> that's why as much as possible, you just want to be able to eradicate those pathogenic biofilms.